I would like to thank you for inviting me here. It's a new community to me. I'm a theoretical physicist turned uh, university politician. And uh, some years ago, uh, when I was still there, I realized privately, so to speak, that uh, aging, I don't need to tell you that, but to tell you how I come into this, aging is really an issue that should concern all of us. And so I try to push forward aging research at the University of Zurich. Now, Switzerland is the, essentially the opposite of all the other countries together. And uh, there is uh, usually very little connection between politics and uh, <clears throat> academic life. Of course, we are just told by our minister that we should not criticize the government. But otherwise, they are disconnected. And, uh, and I realized that the best chance I have in Switzerland is to start on a small scale, essentially at one university or two, and push for high quality research. And then try to gain over politicians and other people. Switzerland uh, socially is uh, still a very rich country. Money is, uh, I can say this without arrogance, for many people not really an issue. And uh, we have still a very good system of old age care, people above 65, mandatory retirement age are well cared for, I'm an example. And uh, so the, the time bomb that clicks in aging is coming much later. So I think given also the relatively loose financial regulation, the, the way for Switzerland is to do high quality research, connect to the rest of the world. <clears throat> and this is what I'm going to talk to you in a few minutes. So the beginning of our work in Zurich was uh, gerontology. In, uh, in Zurich, it's the Faculty of Humanities. And then we didn't have geriatrics. So that was one of the first things we could do, establish this department. And uh, so what did we do? The first thing is uh, what we call university priority program, which is uh, two million francs per year for about 12 years, which you can connect all departments in a university that work on a similar topic. The Second thing is a, a gerontology center, which is older, which is transdisciplinary, which connects hospitals of the city to the university. We are attempting to get the WHO collaboration center status next year. We have a digital initiative at the university that we pick out age-related issues. We have a large international network on artificial intelligence data taking with new and high quality data. And there is a Swiss, and this I'd like to mention, Swiss aging platform. Now this is not like we have seen just before or about in Britain. This is a, essentially a, a club of philosophers talking about the issues of aging. And we haven't yet made the transition to bringing this really into the conscience of politicians. Uh, the, on the geriatric side, we have established a network of universities and hospitals. And this, I think, was a major step for us. But uh, of course, this is happening elsewhere too. And we have one of the largest uh, health longevity related projects. Let me quickly show you a few slides. So this first thing I told you, the university program on dynamic aging is a collaboration of all 
involved departments of people and uh, topics that we try to cross. We have, a collab we have a workspace where people meet, discuss their different issues, and uh, possibly find solutions, find collaborations. Uh, individual health data accounts, that's of course, we, uh, everyone does that. We have, uh, of course, the benefit of uh, high funding, and we can really look at data in many details. We have a, we follow an, uh, a sort of a business model where individual people can keep their own data, and uh, the researchers uh, make uh, their theories or their model of investigation available and the p people themselves can apply it or not. This should solve some of the privacy problems. What we have also done in Zurich, which I'm particularly proud of, is a citizen science center, and we try to marry citizen science with medicine. And this, I think, is a big step forward in keeping personalized data confidential and also gaining the acceptance of people. We have the, I talked quickly about this analyti semantic analytics center, a big international collaboration with various countries and we hope soon to include kings here. <coughs> we do different analyses. Here is an example that for me as a physicist was not new but revealing that you you don't just do population statistics, look how many people are dement or partially dement, uh, but uh, to look at uh, time evolution and to find out that they are not always dement and that it's all situation dependent. And using modern devices, you can use this to really target the issues. The next thing is this network I was talking about uh, between hospitals and the university. This is the geriatric network, might not be the best name. And uh, we c again, this was a big issue in Zurich to combine hospitals and universities to work together and they still argue how to do it best. But uh, it has led to a large project called Do Health, which is uh, for Swiss uh, proportions large is about a 20 mi million project over the last five years with, with 2,000 people from many countries that collects all data, looks at multi <coughs> morbidity factors, looks at everyone above 70, so you don't take out one small slice of the population. This was possible be because of our excellent infrastructure. And uh, the objectives, uh, of course, are the usual ones, better care for less money. Uh, so so it, uh, to show you how complicated this is, this is a slide, not from me, I would never show that. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, people in the medical profession are obviously uh, for them, it's easy to read anything and that sort. Okay, let me show what my vision was five years ago or ten years ago for the future, and it still is. <clears throat> we, I, we had envisaged a Zurich House of Health and Activity, and uh, based on the two pillars I showed you, geriatrics and gerontology, but then involving everyone who is concerned with aging issues like in politics, the life sciences, metabolistic uh, research, medicine, engineering, law, law, economy. Economy is important in Switzerland. You have retirement age at 65. <clears throat> and of course, this is a stupidity. But to get it over with is a major task. So issues like this, to involve the community, like we have seen before in the Israeli example, we also do that. So this, I had the 
a picture of a big building in which researcher, older people, also younger people, would walk in and out and work together. So I hope this is also the picture that everyone else has. Thank you very much. Thank you.